Hi, I'm Amy from the North London Science Festival. Welcome to our digital program. This is our three-part series on the past, present and future of the linen industry in Northern Ireland. If you like what you see, remember to hit that subscribe button. The beetling machines we have here in Upperlands, they're mechanical machines that have probably been in use here for about 150 years. Originally to make beetled fabric, fabric would have been taken into streams and literally clubbed. Obviously with the advent of the Industrial Revolution, things changed and machines started being developed that could be used for this purpose. People often think of William Clark as a weaver and they don't always know that actually we always started out life as a finisher and that's always been our strength. Jackson Clark was in the drinks trade in Matara and linen was the talk of Ireland in about 1730. He was looking for some diversification, employ his three sons and he decided to put on linen. It was a product which was obviously becoming suitable for production in Ireland. The flax was growing all over the country. The climate was right. There was plenty of water to drive the water wheels and hence the beetling engines. He rode out to Upperlands in 1736 on his horse to try and find a location, a suitable location for the manufacture of linen. The most important feature really is the water and uh, the river Claddy goes through Upperlands. He waded his way up for a couple of hundred yards and found a, a suitable spot. We are still in the same place. Um, where the, there was a weir he, he felt would run the water wheel, which in turn would run the engines for the beetles. Also, there was green fields, which in those days were used to bleach the cloth, so they laid the cloth out in the fields for days on end so that it would remain white. As far as we know, we are the last commercial beetlers in the world. They don't make these anymore, obviously. Um, at one point in time, these would have been made in vast numbers across Northern Ireland and England and Scotland and even further afield. Um, but to the best of our knowledge, no one's doing it on a commercial scale anymore. The ones we have originally came from a company called Kane Brothers in Ballymena. So unfortunately, there is no, there's no replacement parts to these machines anymore. So anything that we need to do, we need to figure out how to do ourselves. We start out at the beginning um, by impregnating linen with starch and we then take that wet impregnated fabric down to the beetles and it's wound onto those machines wet. So over the course of the four weeks when it's on this machine, the starch slowly swells those fibres and what that starts to do is close up the fabric so it becomes very, very flat. Over the course of that time, it slowly dries out and as it dries out, it also develops the really high sheen and luster that makes it so beautiful. The beetling machine is driven by an engine that in turn You'll see when you're in the beetling house, there's right up the centre of the house, there's a whole mechanical operation. So from the engine, right through to each individual beetling machine, cogs are turned, would ultimately turn the wipers on the, the beetling machine. And you'll see that's the cylindrical beam that's up above, that's got all the interesting, almost spoke-like pieces coming off it. Now, that as that turns, that lifts up the hammers. So they are lifted gradually, all at a different time, and then dropped upon the fabric so that as, as the bottom beam where the fabric is wound on turns round, the hammers slowly cascade down, or not slowly, but they tumble down in succession, and that's what creates the motion for beetling fabric. Uh, it can be used as a lining fabric, um, but more often than not, it's used in seam reinforcement. Um, so it'll be an internal thing that you never see, which is a shame given there's such a beautiful fabric with such character. But the reason tailors love it so much is because it's got the strength of linen, which is superior to cotton. But because of the beetling process, it's become so flat that when it's inserted into garments and it's lying along the seams underneath other fabrics, you almost, it's almost invisible to the touch, never mind to see, because it's so flat. So that's the real bonus of the, the beetling and tailoring. Um, but it does also have this beautiful sheen that's developed that I think for probably more than 100 years was nearly forgotten about. It's very rarely used, and there's reasons for that. It's a fragile fabric. For us, beetling is going through a bit of a renaissance at the moment, and that's down to Alexander McQueen's Spring Summer 2020 collection. Uh, 
They got in contact with us during the summer of 2019 and they were wanting to research Irish crafts for their new collection. Uh, so they came over on a reconnaissance visit and travelled all around Ireland going to various places and they fell in love with the beetling machine when they came here. And that's one of the nice things about having the beetling machine when you have people that have worked in textiles or fashion for many years, this is the one process you can show them that you're pretty guaranteed that they haven't seen before. So the whole team, creative team led by uh, Sarah Burton fell in love with the process and it was very exciting for us here and that obviously they didn't just want to buy fabric and make it, they're a very creative company, one of the probably most creative labels in the world. They wanted to really push the boundaries and see what they could do with it and it's really nice to see that as regardless of the fragility of the fabric, people are starting to appreciate the amount of time and hours that are in it and it doesn't matter. You buy something expensive, you look after it, you make sure it you make sure they're at last time.